Bless the Lord, O my soul, blessed art thou, Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Some time ago I, I mentioned the Pew Institute had done a report a study and found that only 27% of Roman Catholics in this country still believe in the real presence in the Mass. And it's a topic that is really important to we Orthodox Christians because, first of all, we have a very different approach to our theology than the Roman Catholic Church. Our theology is based on the intuitive nature the noetic knowledge of the heart. So the whole goal as Orthodox Christians is to bring the mind into the heart. Thomas Aquinas, on the other hand, put the emphasis on reason and logic. I remember uh, during my days in Berkeley when I spent three years studying at the Graduate Theological Union and I specialized in Thomas Aquinas. That was before I became Orthodox. And uh, I, I don't know the source of this, but I remember toward the end of that three years reading somewhere that Thomas Aquinas in, in his latter days refuted his theology and said that really it is about uh, the noetic. He didn't use the word noetic, but he talked about um, the mystery of the church's teachings. And it is indeed a great mystery. I had a, a woman speak to me recently about a, a concern that she had as an Orthodox Christian. She said, what do I do when, I, when there are moments that I have doubt about whether Christ's body and blood really is on the altar during the, during the Eucharist? And my advice to her was, you're using logic and reason when you approach the subject like that. It is a mystery, just like the Trinity is a mystery. It's, it's not something that, we, that the Orthodox Church Fathers have ever bothered with. These great teachings of the Church are a mystery. How is it that the Holy Virgin, as a virgin, gave birth to the Christ child? Well, if you're a liberal Protestant, you have come up with all kinds of theories about that. Oh, well, it has something to do with somebody that she knew. Maybe it was before her husband, Joseph. She got impregnated. And Joseph wanted to cover for her. So he, he, he said, well, that's my child. And then ultimately, the early church decided, well, that's the child of God. It's not Joseph's child. But the early church believed strongly that she was a virgin, an ever virgin. Jesus didn't even have siblings until some of the Protestants came along and then they decided, oh, he must have had siblings. His cousins were his brothers. And forgetting or not even having any knowledge that in, the, in biblical times, you called cousins your brothers. They were your brothers. There was that, that, that inerrant link between your whole family. The difficulty that we're facing today as Christians is that we are living in a society that is being influenced by demons. Now, the convenient thing to the demons is that most Americans don't believe in demons. In fact, most people who identify themselves as Christians, Protestants for the most part, and certainly a lot of Roman Catholics, no longer believe in the existence of the devil or of demons. How convenient! Does the devil care whether you know that he exists? He's the author of lies. Why would he care? 
His goal isn't to have you worship him. It's that he, that you turn away from the Trinity. You turn away from true worship before the throne of God. And you deny the divinity and the humanity of Jesus Christ. That's his goal. And he's winning in this society of ours. Never have we seen the United States in such a state of apostasy as we are today. So what do we do about it as Orthodox Christians who value our faith? Well, number one, we don't, don't allow ourselves to stumble into this false idea that logic and reason should reign to heck with logic and reason. That's not what it's about. That doesn't mean that you have to be stupid. I'm not stupid. Some people may think I am, but I'm not stupid. I have an education. What I am saying is that when it comes to the education that is taught in our schools today and our universities, which is pretty sorrowful, frankly, as compared to our faith, our faith is not based on the teachings of a university. And part of the problem with many of our young people is that they lose their faith when they go off to the university. I've shared this before that when I was teaching, I remember a faculty member telling two of us during a cocktail hour that he was bored out of his mind because he has three years until he retires and he doesn't know what he's going to do. I'm bored out of my mind. And the other guy said, I've got the solution. Do what I do. I set out to destroy every belief system that our young people come into this university with. I, I set out to destroy it all. I make a game of it. And this other fellow said, that's what I'm going to do. I like that idea. And what did I do with my cocktail in hand? I walked away. And ultimately, I decided I didn't want to be with these people. I didn't want to teach with them. I didn't want to work with them because I was afraid that I would become like them. God forbid. I really am one of these people that believes that this COVID fiasco was designed to take people away from their churches. And there's a lot of evidence for this. The Methodists and the Baptists, the Southern Baptists in the last, I think, year have lost over a million members. Why? Because many of their churches across the nation were forced to close because of COVID. And then when you look at the statistics, how many people actually did die of COVID? A tiny fraction of people, a tiny fraction. And most of them that died were my age or older. Really? Don't let anybody tell you when I kicked the bucket that I died of COVID. Hospitals test for COVID when you go in. They did that when I went in for my, for all, all the things that I've been into in the last number of years, when I had my, uh, my heart worked on. They tested for COVID. Why? Were they worried that I might be sick with COVID? No, they were hoping that I had COVID because they would get a whole lot of money from the federal government if old Father Trefon has COVID. If I died in an auto accident and they tested me for COVID as I was breathing my last breath, they would get lots of money from the federal government because old Father Trefon died of COVID. At some point, we have to wake up and we have to embrace our faith. We have to embrace our faith with enthusiasm. 
And we, and we have to learn that our faith is not something that is debatable. When we decide that we want to convert someone into orthodoxy, the last thing we do is debate with them. As a high school and college debater, I can tell you that you would not be, you did not become a champion debater by, by being always winning on your side, the, the, the side you believed in. Because if you couldn't win a debate on the side you didn't believe in, you were not a good debater, you would not win. Debate doesn't do anything to bring on faith. Debate is pointless if we do not have our basis in that mystery that is the church. And that mystery that is the church doesn't require us to use logic and reason. So this woman, I told her, stop using logic and reason. Oh, is it really the body and blood of Christ on the altar? Stop using logic and reason and embrace the mystery that is the church. The mystery that how could we be the children of God? That is a mystery. It's, it's the same as the mystery of the Eucharist. It's the mystery of the Trinity. The church's doctrines are a mystery. And I don't know about you, but it's such a relief to know that because I'm worn out trying to use logic and reason in my life. It wore me out. That's why I look so old. <laughs> Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and immortal Word of God.